If you've got your Bibles, turn with me this morning to Colossians chapter 3, verse 1 through 2. If you don't have your Bibles, maybe you have your Bible app on your phone. Uh, and if you don't even have that, we've also got the scripture verses up there for you. Colossians 3, verses 1 through 2, uh, in the New Living Translation says this, Since you have been raised to new life with Christ, set your sights on the realities of heaven where Christ sits in the place of honor at God's right hand. Think about things of heaven, not things of the earth. Father God, we just thank you right now for this opportunity to get into your word. We know that our thinking can be changed this morning by just getting into your word. God, we thank you our faith can rise up and increase because of the power of your word. We know that your word, we put it in our heart today, it's going to help us this week. The psalmist said, it'll keep us from sinning against you. So God, I pray that your word would get inside of us and we would make decisions that would change our lives because of it. And Holy Spirit, I pray this morning reminded of all the different things that you do from our Bible study that we had this morning, but one of them is you are the teacher and you are the helper. Help us this morning. Teach us this morning. Guard your word in our lives this morning. We thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Come on, somebody say amen. amen. I love that where Paul tells the church, hey, think about things of heaven, not things on earth. How many of you say that, was, that would be a good thing to do right about now? Yeah. Two of you. The rest of you don't realize it's election season. Come on. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I was watching baseball, and there were 47 million political campaigns going on during the Dodgers game. And I actually am starting to get confused. Prop 35, 7, 6, and this one. This one was mad at this one. And then the next one comes on and, and all of that. How, how many of you could maybe have a tendency with just a, a little over a week or so with election stuff? Come on. How many of you have met some people a little stressed out? Three of you, come on, anybody kind of just, oh, worried about it. And, and Paul says, this is a time when Nero <laughs> is, empire, is the emperor. <laughs> he says, hey, there's some political stuff that everybody's facing. Don't get stuck on just this. Come on, let's make sure that we're thinking about eternity and not just the now. Amen? How many of you say that? Come on, deep, breathe, big breath and exhale. Come on, how many of that already feels better? I, I don't know what we're stressing out about. Really, I mean, 350 million people. We chose the best two. Come on, this is exciting. <laughs> I, why are you stressed? I mean, you know, before the Sixth Amendment or whatever, it, what used to be so good is that if you got, if you lost, you just become vice president. Why don't we do that again? Wouldn't that be fun? We could just put them together. Well, that would be the best Saturday Night Live skit ever. I mean, you know, I mean, that you just, uh, there's some stressful things, but as Christ followers... What are we, what, 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 why are we, and I'm not saying don't be concerned. I'm not saying don't do your civic duty. I'm not saying don't pray for your nation. Don't say don't get involved. What I am saying is stop blowing up our Instagram. Amen. Stop blowing up everybody freaking out. Come on. We, this is a moment, yeah. but it's not eternity. Yeah. And as Christ followers, we set our minds which help us actually with today. Does that make sense? Our focusing on eternity should help us with our civic duty today. Amen. But if you're only concerned with today, you won't make good choices because you're not thinking about eternity. Uh, uh, Paul goes on to say this in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10. For we all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. So that each one may receive what is due for what he or she has done in body, whether good or evil. Paul says not only 
is it important to have an eternal view, but it's also important to realize that at the end, we are going to go before the judgment seat of Christ, and he is going to look at our life with judgment or rewards depending on how we live now. Yes. So we don't just live for today, we live with eternity as our focus so that then we begin to live lives that make a difference today. Does that make sense? There's a lot of this and that, but if we can tie that all in, it's so good. And so uh, Paul is, in this passage, he's, he's probably about seven years before he dies. He's writing to the church of Corinth, and we know in some of his letters that he writes to Timothy, he is writing things like the crown of righteousness when you finish, and he talks about running the race to win. And so Paul is now at a point in his ministry that he's thinking about eternity, and he's writing to the church there, and he's writing to the church today, is, hey, pay attention to eternity because there's some things that are going to happen based on what you do here. Does that make sense? Yes. And so Paul talks uh, specifically about some rewards, and he talks about judgment. Um, I, I, um, I, I, for, I, I think I've told this story many times, but Rachel and I's house flooded uh, a, a few years ago, and we thought we were going to have to stay in a hotel for one week. We thought it was going to be a week thing. It actually ended up being five months um, with all three of our kids. Uh, I don't care how many times they give you free breakfast. It is not worth it five <laughs> months later. Uh, and But the thing is, when we checked in to to the hotel that we thought was only going to be the week, the guy goes, do you have a, a Marriott rewards number? So you, even though the insurance company is paying for it, you can get credit for it. And I was like, yeah, I do. Here's my reward. Well, five months later, how many of you know we had three billion points? <laughs> Like what? Like oh, th a bit, three billion? Come on! And 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 we went to this hotel and we had used our mile or the the points for the hotel. And when we came in, they gr like they were like oh, and they were like greeting us, telling us how we're their favorite people and stuff. <laughs> and we're like, you have no idea it was because of a house flood. <laughs> like they thought we were ballers, and we're like, State Farm, come on, yes. <laughs> and, and and so. And I, to, to today, I love rewards. I just, I'm not a couponer, but I'm a rewarder guy. Like, I want those Starbucks, come on, points, and, and then you can link them. And I, I want my Sky Mile points. Come on, anybody else like that? Like, I, I'll, I'll try to pay. I've, I've even looked at, is there a way to pay my mortgage with the credit? <laughs> I want those points. Come on, anybody know what I'm talking about? And so, and so we're going to talk a little bit about rewards today, and then we're also going to talk about judgments. Uh, Rachel and I, when we first got married, we lived in North Seattle, and our car got broken into. And uh, we didn't really know what was taken. I think a couple sweatshirts. Uh, uh, one of the things that was taken was we had a, we had a, a CD player. You guys remember that? And, and we had Delirious. I don't know if you know who Delirious was, but there's this Christian band. They took our, they, I mean, they broke into our car and stole the Christian uh, CD. Come on. Oh, that's just messed up. Uh, took some stuff. We didn't, and we didn't realize it, but we had left a video. You you guys remember VHS? Anybody remember VHS? Well, where we lived, we didn't have, we, this was so old, it was pre-Blockbuster. It was like family-owned businesses. And I'll never forget because the business name was uh, Video Variety. And uh, it, was just a, it was just a mom and pop's pop thing. Well, what we didn't know is when our car got broken in, they, uh, that video was in the car to be returned. And it didn't get returned. They stole it. And we didn't realize it was stolen until it had been like 90 days. And Video Variety would call and leave. Come on, how many of you remember this? Answer machines. Okay. We had an answer machine. And it was like, this is Video Variety. Give us our movie back. And we're like, oh, my gosh. And, and so by that time, 
It had been so long that we couldn't fill out a police report because it was our, and we didn't know that it had been stolen. And so it just got, and then like we had caller ID, so I would know when it was video variety and I wouldn't answer it. Come on. How many of you love that? That's the will of God. But I was so young, I didn't realize that one day we got a judgment. We got something they had taken us, and instead of the 99 cent video fee that we should have paid, it was like $500, which was about the price of our mortgage back then, right? And it was like, what are you talking about? It took us like a year to pay that off. I, I, instead of swearing, I would go video variety anytime <laughs> somebody would cut me off on the freeway. I hated those guys. <laughs> hated them, hated them, hated them. Uh, I hope they went out of business. No, 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 I shouldn't say that. <laughs> Wouldn't that be awesome if they were still in business? They've got a great model, 99 cents to $500. Come on. Uh, but, but Paul is talking to us and letting us know that, hey, we have a mindset and we're looking towards eternity because the things that we do today at one point are going to be judged by God. Whew. And, and, and that's, a, that's a powerful thing. And because we're Christ followers, we know that our sins are washed by the blood of Jesus. Because of the sacrifice of Christ, not anything that we've done, we're not going to be judged on our sins. We will definitely be judged on our faithfulness. It's kind of like... Have you ever been to a, uh, a, a graduation where everyone is there, they're graduating, everyone's graduating, but then there's special awards that certain people have at that graduation. You see the ropes, come on. How many of you had ropes when you graduated? You, had, you were, yeah, you all raise it, your hand up, yeah. Uh, uh, I, I had no ropes. I had to go to Home Depot and get my own rope, come on. <laughs> I was trying to fake it, man. I was like, everybody knew, you're not smart. You didn't even use the right kind of cord, come on. But, but, but you know, you, you, everyone graduates at the graduation ceremony. There's a valedictorian. There's those that had honor roll. There's different things. And so when we get to heaven, come on, we're all there. How exciting is that? Come, three of you are like, yeah, come on, we're all there. How exciting is that? Come on, how exciting is that? But, but there's going to be some of us that are going to be rewarded even more because of our faithfulness, because of, of, of living this life not just for here, but living for eternity. Isn't that exciting? And, and I know it, and, and, you know, I've heard different people pre uh, preach this, and, and you can kind of look it up. They'll talk about, you know, the, uh, you know, the size of the mansion when you get to heaven, you know, and you know that, that some people who made it to heaven are going to live like, as f like, like at the far end of heaven. Come on, because they, they, they didn't really do that good when they were here. Come on. And then there's other people, you know them, you, you know, that they're just, they're just the sweetest and all that, and you know, man, they're going to be... They're they're going to be in a high rise in heaven, right? They're going to be close. Uh, uh, Wesley, uh, John Wesley and George Whitfield used to argue um, uh, about theological issues. And, and uh, they would, they, they, the one person would preach at like at the 9 a.m. would say this. And then at the 11 a.m., the other one would preach the complete opposite. They argued theologically about it. So one time they went to George Whitfield and they were like, the press was going to get them. Come on, this is going to be a sound bite. And they're like, you know, will you even see John Wesley in heaven, knowing that he just spoke exactly the opposite on eternal salvation and what they believed? One was a Calvinist, one wasn't, and they, they thought they had him. And he's like, nope, I don't think I'll see John Wesley in heaven. And the journalist was like, yeah, like, yeah, this is going to be headlines. He goes, because he'll be so close to the throne that I won't get a chance to see him and spun it. And I love that. I love that thought of, come on, let's live everything we can for Jesus and eternity. And let's not get caught up in the petty things. Let's believe that the other people, come on, are going to be promoted and are going to be rewarded and are going to be honored in heaven. Amen. I just don't, I don't have time to have my list of people 
that, of Christians that I don't agree with and that I don't like. Man, I want to live the way of going, I won't even see that person in heaven because they'll probably be so close to the throne. And I know my bad jokes on Sunday. I know where my little hut's going to be. Come on, somebody. Say amen. amen. And so I want to talk about that a little bit this morning. Say rewards. rewards. Somebody say judgment. judgment. And uh, I, I, I love what Jesus says. Jesus says in Matthew chapter 25, verse 21, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. I will set you over much. Enter the joy of your master. This is a very famous portion of scripture. This is the scripture of the talents where Jesus has given people different talents. Somebody we know buried the talent, didn't do anything with it. Another one had five and he doubled it. And then there was another one that even doubled it from there. And he says, well done, well done, good and faithful servant. Say that to your neighbor. Say, well done, well done. good and faithful, good and faithful. servant. servant. Uh, how many of you? Know that those are the words we want to hear. Yeah. I mean, that are the wor- those are those are the words you want to hear. And um, I just had a friend uh, whose dad has been in hospice for a while, and he just passed away last week. And he has for a while suffered with some dementia. Didn't even know who his kids were. Didn't know what was going on. It's just a very sad thing. But this week, this last week, last week of his life, he was in hospice. And they started playing some worship music in the background while he was there. And all of a sudden, this week, the week that he actually passed away, he started singing all these old hymns and he's for the last couple weeks hasn't been able to talk doesn't remember anything they play the worship music and all of a sudden in this room he starts singing the old songs amazing grace he starts singing oh the blood of jesus he starts singing this why because our flesh is temporary but our spirits are eternal and, 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 and so here is Jesus saying, come on, well done, good and faithful servant. And all I could tell my friend was he's grieving his dad, but he's also like mind blown that what's happening because his spirit is still alive. And I said, you know what? I think that right now there is an applause while he is going into heaven and all he is hearing are these things well done good and faithful servant so i came up with something <laughs> i see some of your looks uh-oh <laughs> have you been told rachel what i came up with goody you can steal this if you want to but it's really mine uh, uh does anybody anybody remember those what would jesus do bracelets yes. i came up with a new one okay because because everybody talks about tom brady goat There's all these different terminologies. All the cool kids have all these acronyms for things, and they shorten things. I came up with one that's going to blow your mind. Some of you might get it tattooed. We won't talk about if that's scriptural or not, but uh, it's good. It is called W-D-G-A-F-S, and I call it (laughs) Wood Gaffs. Say it with me. Say Wood Gaffs. Wood Gaffs. Super catchy. Is that good? Wood gaps. Well done. Good and faithful servant. Write it with a sharpie. Memorize it. This is what we live for. We live for wood gaps. <laughs> Say it with me. Say wood gaps. No, 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 no. This is what we want to hear. We don't want to hear what the bank account was at the end of the day because we can't take that with us. We don't want to hear how many followers we got on TikTok. We don't want to hear 
the accolades. We want to hear wood gaps. <laughs> we want to hear, well done, good and faithful servant. What do you want to put on your tombstone? Yeah. Wood gaps. <laughs> what, what, what do you want people to know that is what said in heaven? Well done, good and faithful servant. When we think that way, it changes everything we do today. Because we're playing for, we're living for, we're breathing for that statement to be said over us. Well done, good and faithful servant. Say it with me, wood gas. <laughs> You'll never forget this message, will you? <laughs> so let's talk about that. Well done, good and faithful servants. Say, say good. good. Say good. good. Good is, we talked about this a couple of weeks ago. Good is not a personality. It's not a feeling. Oh, that was a good movie. Good is actually an action word when it talks about it through the Bible as in we do good things. In fact, the Bible says in Galatians, let us not grow weary in well doing. Uh, and and, and uh, uh, so uh, do good. Uh, Galatians, let us not grow weary of well of doing good for in due season we will reap if we don't give up. And so good is when we know that we're living for this mentality where God says, well done, good and faithful servant. Good is, the Monday takeaway is, what, are we, what, are, what action are we taking to demonstrate God's love to people that we're around? Mm -hmm. what, what good are we doing? What, what good are we doing? That, what, what good are we doing? Are we, are we, are we waiting for heaven or are we bringing some heaven to earth today by doing good? Right. Just practical things. Yeah. Practical things. Are we, are we bringing heaven today? Uh, it might sound old school gentlemen. Are you opening the door for somebody? Are you helping carry something for somebody? Are you, hey, I got your coffee today. No strings, nothing that I need. Hey, can, am I making a difference? Can I help you? Can I, can I do good? Can I emulate God in eternity today? Well done, thy good and faithful servant. Can we just lift up our hands towards heaven? Come on, say this with me. Say, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit speak, to me speak to me about actions, about actions I, can do I can do to bring eternity, to bring eternity into, my now. into my now. Show me a neighbor. Show me a, neighbor. Show me a family member. Show me, a family member. Show me somebody I work with, Show me somebody I work with. That, I can that I can show your love, show your love in a practical way. Come on, somebody say amen. 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 Well done, good and faithful servant. Wood gaps. Wood gaps. <laughs> Come on, say it with me. Say wood gaps. Wood gaps. Faithful, which means to be consistent and reliable. Luke chapter 16, 10, whoever can be trusted with a little can be trusted with much more. Good and faithful trustworthy, reliable. I think sometimes I love how Jesus says it. Hey, be faithful in the little, then you'll become ruler over much. That's always hard for us because I think sometimes we want the much before we want to do the little. Yeah. Hey, Amen. Yeah. I, I was telling a story um, I, that we, I'm just going to say it. I'm going to say it. You can forgive me later. Um, we, we had a video this morning for the men's um, 
trying to get men involved with community groups. And I had said, uh, when we filmed, I'm just going to say what I said. I said, I, uh, and forgive me, I said something to the effect of, oh, men uh, suck at this. And it was on the video. And this morning, I was going through my devotions, and it says in Titus, Paul says to Titus, the young preacher, hey, be careful what you say, because you want to be above reproach. And I just was like, all of a sudden convicted, and Stephen had already edited the video, they'd already put it up, and everything was ready, but I was just like, I don't know, you know what, that, that may be not appropriate for a Sunday, maybe I shouldn't have said it that way, maybe I should have said something like, that stinks, or something like that, and I just felt the conviction of the Holy Spirit, and I just was like, you know what, it's not that big of a deal, I'm casual, I mean, look, I'm, wear, I'm wearing jeans with holes in it, I, how, I, I'm already holy, I mean, seriously, I can do what, and I just kind of was like, have you ever argued about, like, a prompting of the Holy Spirit? No, no one has. Okay, that's awesome. Um, so I just kind of arguing. It's not that big of a deal. But I just felt the conviction of the Holy Spirit. And so I just said, you know what? Just dead. Can we edit that so that I don't say that and just start it out? And even if it doesn't really make sense how the start is, I, I just don't want that in there. Does that make sense? And, and so I was telling uh, when we were before going over the service, saying it to a couple guys, there's a story where Smith Wigglesworth is given as a famous evangelist and he was given a dead baby in the middle of the service. A baby had died at the hospital. The parents, wanting a miracle, took him from the doctors, brought him to a church service. And, and, and history tells us that Smith Wigglesworth took the baby and he punted, kicked the baby into the crowd, and into the crowd, somebody caught the baby, and when they caught the baby, the baby came back to life. Is that the most amazing story? And they asked Smith Wigglesworth, how did you know it was God that told you to kick the baby? And Smith Wigglesworth said, oh, I would have never have done this had I not first just been obedient with the small promptings of the Holy Spirit and it built to this moment. Does that make sense? It's like we see people doing big, don't kick any, don't go, <laughs> don't post this on the internet that I said to kick the baby, but, but, but does it, I think sometimes we see people do big things and we're like, how did they do that? It's usually by being faithful in the small things. And as you do that, then you become that. Does that make sense? I, I, I once talked to this uh, business guy, and yeah, you can go ahead. You guys are awesome. I'm wrapping up. I was talking to this business guy, and he was like telling me, hey, when our business becomes this much, I want to start being generous. I want to start helping the mission field. I want to start tithing and giving. And I just laughed. He was like, what are you laughing at? <laughs> like, it's, it doesn't work that way. He's like, what do you mean? He's like, no, once the business gets going and it really starts and we get profit, I want to start giving and, tie, and I'm being generous and helping the mission field. I just, I was like, I, I, I love you, but that, <laughs> if you can't be faithful now, you try doing it with an extra zero and it's going to be tougher. You had what you're talking about, three zeros? Oh, you'll never, it'll be almost impossible then. But now, do it now. And it's so much easier. Now, don't, don't, I'm going to read my Bible when I get this new position and I, my time's better. Time's never going to be better. Take the five minutes now. Don't try to say one day, I'm going to read the entire Bible today. <laughs> no, 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 no. Just be faithful. Prayer time? Prayer time? I'm going to, oh, I'm going to challenge the strongholds of Los Angeles, and I'm going to speak to the ark enemy, and I'm going to, and just, just spend a little bit more time before you pray your meal. Come on. Don't, 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 don't. Just be faithful in the little. Be faithful in the little. And Jesus says, well done, thy good and faithful servant. 
just come on keep showing up to church keep lifting up your hands keep on keep on witnessing keep on loving your family keep on smiling keep on biting your tongue when you know you would love to say something oh I'm gonna be faithful and watch God begin to do amazing things he didn't say well done thy good and anointed well done thy good and popular well done thy good and polished well well done thy good and influential well done thy good and Pinterest esque come on no he said well done good and faithful I can do that I may not be able to do some of the other things but come on we can be faithful we can just keep showing up we can just keep on having expectation we can just keep on saying God you're able we can just keep on saying God I can't do it but you can we can keep on showing up to prayer showing up to community groups showing up to church God I don't know what else to do but I'll keep being faithful and he says heaven get ready to applause because somebody is coming through the door that all they were was faithful and heaven cheers it on come on point to your neighbor and say you can be faithful come on point to your other neighbor and say you can be good tell them you can start by being good by taking me to lunch after church last one we'll close is this okay last one what's the, what's what what is <laughs> what's the word again you guys this is like like life changing and you're not all getting it this is so powerful Can't, I mean it's the marketing on it alone come on say say it well done good and faithful not diva that, that can't be right. Well done, good and faithful. Know it all? No? Well done, good and faithful Democrat? Well done, good and faithful Republican? So quiet in here. Well done, good and faithful PTA member? Well done, good and faithful Karen. Sorry, Karen. <laughs> we love you. We love you, Karen. Happy birthday. Okay. What does it say? Well done, good and faithful. Jesus says, for even the Son of Man came to not to be served, but to serve. It's not about us. It's not about us. It's not about us. Theodore Roosevelt said, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. I just want to serve. God, what if, how can I serve? How can I serve you? How can I serve my family? How can I serve my church? How can I serve my community? How can I serve? Samuel says, and it's taught by Eli, <laughs> your servant is listening. Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. Last time, can we raise our hands? Come on, would you say this with me? Say, Holy Spirit, more of you, less of me. I'm here to be a servant. It's not about being served. It's about serving others, and most importantly, serving you. What do you want me to do? Amen. It's a good prayer to say, huh? And not what I want. What do you want me to do? Who do you want me to serve? And then the Bible says, 
come on, the most important words that we could ever hear. Well done, good and faithful servant. Would you stand? Hallelujah. I, um, I wrote this in my notes. In about 79 AD, Mount Vesuvius erupted, you know it as Pompeii, and in the 20s, they, they, probably in the 1930s, I think it was, they excavated that area by Pompeii, and because of the, the ash, they actually found petrified bodies. And they found, it's a famous body that they found petrified, but it was of a woman grabbing a hold of all of her jewelry. And because the ash fell, she's actually petrified like a statue still holding on to her jewelry when she really needed to get out. And I, I just, I think of that eternity sometimes. I just, I, that statue in my mind, it comes to my mind is, I sure don't want to hold on to things today that are temporary, but there's something more important to do. And she, she was holding on to that, and it actually caused her to be stuck in that moment forever. Instead of surviving, instead of making it, she's still trying to hang on to that. And I just want to live a life that says, that doesn't matter. As Goody said, and I said, it all goes back in the box. Come on. No, no, no. I, 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 I want to live where God says, well done, good and faithful servant. And um, I wrote this in my notes. And uh, as I was praying for you guys this morning, praying for myself this morning, I, I, it's so weird because it didn't really go with my message. But I kept on going back to that phrase, well done. I think we all want to hear that when we get to heaven, but I just felt like today, I felt like the Holy Spirit spoke to me. That that's an eternal phrase, well done. Say that with me, say well done. Well done is an eternal phrase. It's something that we'll hear in heaven. Some of us haven't never heard it here on earth. I don't know, maybe it was from a very performance love parent. It was almost like you never got the love unless you got these kind of grades or maybe you excelled in this kind of thing or you went to that college or maybe you just didn't really have a dad or that ever even was in your life and you never heard the phrase, well done or Maybe just life has been tough and just recently at work, the stress load is so difficult. You don't hear well done or maybe you've been uh, in a divorce lately and it's just like the, the fight between you two and it just, instead of ever hearing anything good, it's just bad and you're not enough and you weren't good enough and all of these things. And I think some, sometimes we live in a world where we never actually hear the word well done. And I was praying this morning, and it, it, and it was early, and uh, I just felt in my heart and in my spirit that something was going to happen this morning, that, that we can say well done. And as a dad, I have a 24-year-old, a 21-year-old, uh, and a 15-year-old, and, 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 and I can say well done to you and say it in the authority as a pastor, as a spiritual father, and something thing is going to unleash and, and we can say it to one another because when we begin to say well done we're saying words that are eternal that are going to echo through the corridors of eternity that's a word that we're going to hear is well done and we don't have to wait for eternity to begin to speak it over some of us now because I believe that 
some of us have never heard well done or haven't heard it for a while and it's affecting our today because we can't even live for eternity when we're damaged today but God says come on I believe today we've gotten some practical come on let's let's be good let's be faithful let's be servants but I also believe the Holy Spirit is moving this morning and he wants to speak to you he wants to encourage you he wants to break something that maybe has been on you that you've been trying to live up to or or try to get I mean man can you imagine the people with daddy issues who's always have needed somebody to say something or can you imagine all the people that have never fully got to enjoy because of that performance mindset can I tell you who the sun sets free is free indeed and can I tell you some of you need to hear this not in eternity but to hear it now because if you would get that in you that God says well done now something will change something will break your marriage is going to get better come on your job performance is going to do better your relationships are going to do better because you won't be looking for other people's affirmation come on you'll get the affirmation from God does that make sense so that's you today and you'd say, yeah, Israel, I don't, I never really was raised hearing well done. Or maybe you'd say, Israel, if you only knew what I'm in the middle of right now, I'm not hearing a lot of well dones. Can we just pray for you and take a moment to just say, Holy Spirit, move? I know it's a little different from the message, but I just felt so strong. The Holy Spirit wanted to minister to some people this morning and if it's only one it's worth it to me I feel like there's several people here something's gonna break something's gonna be healed God's gonna do something if that's you this morning you say that's I just haven't been raised hearing it I'm not in a season right now where I'm hearing it and I need God to speak it inside of me would you just lift up both hands towards heaven right now I want to pray with you and for you I want to pray with you and for you oh Holy Spirit Stephen, we declare over you in the name of Jesus, well done. We declare well done. We declare God says well done. You are good, you are faithful, and you are a servant. We declare not only in heaven, but you'll hear it now. Father God, we speak it right now in the name of Jesus. We declare over you in the name of Jesus, well done. We declare that God says, I see you my son I see you and I declare I see you daughter I declare well done in the name of Jesus we declare right now in the name of Jesus God I pray that you would speak prophetically into the gut into the spirit into the soul of the men and women with their hands up God would you begin to tell them you love them would you begin to tell them you're proud of them would you begin to tell them well done would they get healed today from needing man's affirmations? And would they get a hold of not needing man's yes, but getting your yes? We declare right now in the name of Jesus, we speak life over them. We speak hope over them. We speak future over them. We say that what you say about them, you created them. They are unique. Before they were even formed in their mother's womb, you had a plan and a purpose for them. We declare that they'll be blessed in the city and blessed in the field. We declare in the name of Jesus, they are the head and not the tail. They are above and not beneath. We declare blessing in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Just put your arm on the shoulder of the person next to you, would you? Just scoot over and put your arm on the person next to you. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit. We declare over that person on our left and our right, we declare, Holy Spirit, would you fill them? That well done, good and faithful servant comes from the fruit of the Holy Spirit in their life. And we pray, Holy Spirit, begin to fill them. Begin to baptize them. 
Holy Spirit, begin to the areas that need to be pruned, pruned, so that there would be much fruit. We declare the fruit of the Spirit in their life. We declare joy. We declare peace. We declare patience. Come on, we declare long-suffering. We declare the fruit of the Spirit to be in their life. Holy Spirit, we thank you that Jesus said to wait for the Spirit and that we would be endued with power. We declare dudamous power on that person on the left and right. Not them trying to be good, not them trying to be a servant, not them trying to be faithful, but would it be your power, Holy Spirit? Would you empower them? Would you endue them? Would you fill them with your spirit like never before? Holy Spirit, come on, let's pray for that person like you mean it. Holy Spirit, fill that person on our left and fill that person on our right let them not go home the way they came in we pray for a new filling a new impartation of the Holy Spirit we declare a baptism of your spirit to be on that person on our left and our right in Jesus mighty name we pray come on somebody say amen hallelujah hallelujah Come on, can we sing it? Rachel, we don't even need the mics. You already proved that. Come on, can we just sing it right now? talking about is eternity I'm just going to do this very quick but when it comes to eternity if you're not sure where you'll spend eternity friend we can answer that question today because the Bible talks about how we enter eternity and it is through a relationship with Jesus it's not our works. It's not the, the good and the bad things. And if hopefully we do enough good to outweigh the bad. No, no, no. It's through faith in God's Son, Jesus Christ, that He died and rose again. And so as we talk about eternity, you're questioning. You're not sure. Do you want to be assured today? Or today you'd say, backslid. I want to recommit. Or maybe for the very first time, you want to say, I want to spend eternity with Jesus. I'm simply going to do what we just did just a moment ago. We just had people lift up their hand. I'm simply going to count the three. If you'd say this morning, I need to rededicate my life. This morning, I need to give Jesus my life for the very first time. And this morning, I just, I want to pray for assurance. I've been struggling. Am I? Am I not? We want to pray with you and for you. And so if one of those things are you, and today you want to make and declare Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, on the count of three, I just want you to lift up your hand right where you're at. Come on, one. Come on, two. Come on, three. When we're talking about eternity, awesome. Yeah, I see that hand there. Yep, I see that hand back there. Anybody else? Just lift it up high enough and long enough so that I can see it. Awesome. You can put those hands down. Everybody say this prayer with me. Say, Jesus, we've talked about today, eternity. And I want to spend eternity with you. And it's possible because you 
died on the cross for my sins. And on the third day, you rose again. You conquered death for me. Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart. Lead my life from today on. Holy Spirit, fill me. Help me be planted in your house. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, what are they doing in heaven right now? Wait a minute. They made more noise at the Dodgers game, but we just saw people's eternity change. Come on, what are they doing in heaven right now? Come on, what are they doing in heaven right now?